Yeah. So we're, That's we're, the we're, next we're kind of stopped as we go along, so give us a couple minutes to get so settled. We're live on YouTube now. I don't know where we're going. Okay. Wanna, we're live on, on three different channels here. So we are live on Instagram. YouTube, in, uh, Instagram. Instagram. Working it, on Facebook. Uh, so GI's Instagram and YouTube. We're live on Wolverine Airsoft Facebook page. Um, we're going to try to get Mark Zuckerberg sometime soon. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg is <laughs> going to be stopping by. Uh, personal friend, you know, all that. <laughs> So, trying to get Facebook set up right so, now. So okay, so they're gonna get the GI Facebook, Facebook page crazy. live stream as well. So we'll be on four live streams all at once from different angles, depending on whose beautiful face you want to look at closest. Don't look at mine. Look at Rich. Let's just look at Rich. There's Rich. <laughs> How's it going, guys? And and we're, we're live on Facebook. All right, we got we got Facebook too. Two portrait that. view and we got two uh, landscape view. We're, we're there we go. We'll go ahead and skip that back right there. Awesome. So, all right. So we're live here. Rich, Walter, y'all know me. I'm not that important. And no, he's the most important guy because right, he's the he's the face. He's he's the player. I guess. <laughs> but uh, all right. Welcome everyone. Welcome Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Wolverines Instagram, or is that Facebook? Yeah, this is Facebook. Instagram. Yeah. Well, Facebook, 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 yeah. Facebook. All right, so uh, we get, we we we're just touching on you know random topics, and most importantly, we just wanted to thank everybody for tuning in on an impromptu <laughs> type of uh, live stream. But we'll try to make it as entertaining <laughs> as possible, just like airsoft, right? Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, so we were I was here yesterday. We were shooting a, shooting some videos, just uh, hanging out, talking, um, and. Because we were, we're doing stuff with the new MTW, those of you that are familiar with it. Um, and so we got on some conversations about airsoft in general and uh, airsoft culture and technology, how it's changed, how it's, the technology is influencing. Yeah, the, different playing style, different uh, mentality, I guess. Like, yeah. for example, when I used to play, I still do once a while, like, our GI big games and whatnot, I actually go out there and play. You know, not like some businessmen, they literally don't even know what airsoft is. Yeah. You know, you met quite a few of those. Yeah. But I, when I used to play uh, back in, I, I was very active from 2000, uh, 1996 to 2001. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we really don't have that many shops or, or, or players. So everyone were super friendly. <laughs> There are obviously some dicks out there. Oh, sure. Some there's there's, yeah. there's always... But I would say 95% were friendly because they want more people to play. They want mm -hmm. more people to enjoy the game. And, man, that time, a Tokyo Marui M4, $350. Oh, yeah. So everybody yeah. shared body, tips. You know... Classic body you know, shooting 300 feet per yeah. second. <laughs> yeah. You know what's the, the, the best part? Let's say my receiver breaks, right? And someone else has a spare receiver. They wouldn't try to charge money. It's like, here, put this on. Yeah. You know, yeah. just try to get your game, you know, your, your your gun back on and try to try to play it. And I'm pretty sure we still have that today. I'm, and probably a lot more. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I've been playing as long as you have. I started maybe 2009, 2010. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a lot less than you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember when I actually started. I, I, I started, I didn't start as long ago as Walter did, but I, I think I started in about... 2003, 2004, um, and have been fairly active since then. It's, you know, whatever, I was in college for a while, didn't, didn't play much while I was in college, all that kind of stuff, but, um, yeah, so if you have questions, hop on here, I'll, we'll sort of man try to monitor yeah. them as much as we can. Uh, Matt says, only question I need answered, what do you all think about Infinity War? I haven't seen it yet. Neither have I. We're probably the only two people <laughs> that haven't seen it. You somehow I, I, managed to get three people that have not seen Infinity War. So okay. I've been watching Matt. a lot of the, um, you know, how, how the ending's supposed to be, whatnot, uh, and that's about I, it. I haven't seen. I'm trying to avoid spoilers as much as possible. Uh, KP says, "When I used to play, oh no, I try. I'm trying to block somebody. Crap, let's not do that." Uh, top left. Top, top left. left. There yeah. we go. Okay, sorry. Just tried to block somebody. Um, when I used to play, that's the same thing I say all the time. 
<laughs> no, that's 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 so, what this is about. We want people to start playing more and more again. Right. Well, and it's and it's one one of the things I, I've realized because I've had these discussions with you know the group of us that are the the old timers who've been around for a long time, and you know it's it's easy to like place you know place blame on the the you know new generation, the younger kids, whatever it is, you know put blame. Oh, well, they do this, they do that. But I think a lot of it also comes down to the, a lot of us old timers have kind of gotten, even the ones that are still involved, we've kind of gotten a little, I don't know, jaded. Right. And like, we don't want to, you know, we have this bad attitude towards the kids, you know, kids that are starting, so then we don't put in the time and the effort to teach, you know, to mentor them and to, you know, bring them Education. along. Education. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah, and so you gotta, you know, you gotta, everybody's gotta take responsibility for their piece in it. Right. I, I, I. <laughs> I 100% agree with you on it, and that's one of the things um, I hope as a store and a manufacturer side that we can we can actually, you know, start promoting mentoring, start yes. promoting, yes. you know, like like Elite Force did that. They they mm -hmm. post a couple posts. Hey, we got to educate the new new players, but it's almost like how can we do that? How 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 what what is a positive way of doing it? You know, instead of you know now kids. Some some people even back in the day when we when when I was playing, you know, people dress like Navy SEAL and they they automatically pretend they're Navy SEAL and then their their attitude hundred percent changed. Yeah, see, most of the my my memory of playing you know playing years ago was it used to be more we would dress up like that, but everybody knew that you were like, you know, construction pretending. guys, right? You're like you you were pretending, teachers, right? This was a, this was fun. You're like, hey, we're gonna dress up and we're gonna take pictures and we're gonna have a good time and all that kind. Right. Yeah, you know, we're playing a game. Um, the, I don't know. It feels like I feel like with the advent of a lot of uh, uh, oh, that's a that's a good question. Have you ever cheated? I defy anybody that has played airsoft for any yeah, length of time. You miss shots from saying that you, you like, never cheat. That's not, it's, that's a lie. It's not intentional. You miss. Exactly. It's, well, it's your and, it, and when you're under pressure, it's easy to, like, you know, you you feel something real slight, and your mind just automatically like, oh, it must have been a ricochet or something. Right. And then you're like, oh, yeah. the adrenaline si subside, you stop, and you're like, ah, uh, probably should have. You know, I think anybody that's played for any like no, yeah, has, has has had stuff like that. Like, you, uh, you know, whatever. I've yeah. I've had people tell me I didn't call a shot, and my my my. Uh, Philosophy is you you apologize. Say I'm sorry. Yeah, my bad. It's part of the game. game. If I if I if I missed it, I'm you know tell me I'm yeah, I'll call got, it and you're good. You got pyro going off. You got thunderbees yep. going off. You got this dude with the gas pedal back M4 going off next to your ear, and then some dude says you shot your backpack. It's like I I have no idea, dude. And I'm sorry if I did miss that call, but you know it happens. Yeah. He, but I don't think there's ever a case where I intentionally not called one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, obviously, I'm sure you wouldn't be happy if I got caught doing that. Right. So you know. I, I the, my, my take on it is it's kind of like football. You, you're going to get called uh, penalties on uh -huh. it. Yeah. Um, basketball, fouls. Sure. You know, same thing. It's part of the game. And if, somebody, if somebody calls you for it, cool. The, then, the worst you know. thing would be like shouting across the field saying, <laughs> hey, effing, effing, yeah. effing, you're effing. You know, what you just did is if your teammate's next to you, you just give them up. Yep. Don't be that guy. Don't call other people's heads. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't do that. You can talk about it later if there are app administration trader guys over there. You know, go talk to them and say, hey, I think um, I shot the guy. The guy never <laughs> never called hit. You know, don't confront them. Yeah. Talk to them. Just, hey, did you feel this? At just cause this, this cause this fight. Oh, right. No. I, I I think the most the the most terrible thing is uh. that if everybody thinks their gun can shoot six hundred yards. You're gonna have a lot of missed calls. That was actually a good question right there. Here, it's a question for Rich. Uh, do you miss Anthony and Matt at Amped? I know that Amped were always there and still bigger proponents for Wolverine. They sold me a bunch of bolts set up. So, question about Amped Airsoft. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those. It's one of the people cycle through the industry. I, I you know, they they're actually still around. Anthony is with uh, Milson West, and uh, Matt is with Z Shot. So they're they're still around. I actually saw them at Shot Show. So somebody asked if speed, air, what are our thoughts on speed soft, speed air soft, and we just talked about. Yeah, we were just today. we were actually talking about this at dinner last night, and I actually think it's, you know, I actually think it's a, 
a, a good addition to sort of the airsoft I industry. Agree. Like, I, I mean, it, now it, it's it's highly subject to uh, bad reputation, which is unfortunate. And there's because it's one of those it's one of the segments of the industry where you've gotten these people that you know try to get these super aggressive videos, and then that's mm -hmm. the yeah. you always get the 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 stupid stuff that goes viral and everybody thinks that's you know, it's like we were talking about shootings we were talking yeah, about yeah. shootings yesterday right? right like everybody gets the bad news and spreads the bad news and that's what everybody hears about they don't t hear about all the time people were res responsible and like no yeah yeah the way yeah. i see this be airsoft thing is it's a general rushing it's fast paced mm -hmm. it's actually viewable if yes. you know you can set it up yep so it's not a bad thing it's it's obviously different than Milsim or your regular pickup, you know, yeah, woods ball or, you know, regular games. But I think it brings a different type of adren adrenaline rush type of game. No, yeah, it's definitely yeah. a different uh, game style. Like when I first started playing, um, Speedsoft didn't really come into its own until about a year or two after I had started. And um, Tax City kind of took the idea and just ran with it. And now you got Speed QB going down once a month or once every other month. But, um, it's definitely a different play style. It's much faster. It's not a, I can't say it's not strategic, but it's a lot of run and gun, and it's a, a much faster pace than mm -hmm. some people are actually used to. Like, still, I'm personally a. I would think player. there's strategy in volume. No, yeah, there is strategy in volume. Right whoever but, should, should move up first, whatnot. Yeah, if if Almost you don't like play it though, game. yeah, if you don't play it though, you don't really look at it with the strategy in mind. But if you play it, there's a lot more that goes into it that you thought. Um, I'd sat in at one of the live streams at Tax City, and I I look around, and I just don't I see dudes running around shooting, and I don't think much about it. But I talked to some of the guys from SYG Ltd, and they're telling me, you know, oh yeah, this is our attack plan, this is that, and there's actually a lot of planning that goes into it, and it's just something not a lot of people see. They just see a lot of shooting. So, do you think I'm I'm kind of right in this sense? Airsoft it's a hobby, but mm -hmm. speedsoft can be a sport. Yes, it could. It could be if it was up. if it was picked up and done the right way. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely think it could be set up as a sport. You could set it up with, you know, legitimate competition and all that kind of stuff. Um, now the, yeah, it, it it definitely could be if it was if it was done correctly. Um, I actually really, you know. I, I had a you know I had a, a a period of my you know sort of playing career where I was into you know real serious uh, milsim stuff and that's you know really what I enjoyed. At this point, I honestly like m what I enjoy most is just going and shooting people. Like I, I just I just don't want to take it too seriously, you know. Like I, I mean, what, and and you can do that in a milsim style event or a or a anywhere any yeah. kind of event. But there, there's it's a different attitude, you know. Like I, I was at an event locally, and um, the, like the the event, the person running the event literally got up and said, like, if you're, uh, I forget how he phrased it, but like, if you're just here to run around and shoot people, like you're gonna leave your team hanging, like you're getting, you know, like you need to be on comms, you need to be communicating, and and I, I get that, like I get that, but it's, I'm kind of going like, uh, <laughs> literally, that's why I'm here, like. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I get the like, oh, you're part of the whole team, and you need to listen to command structure and all that kind of stuff. But like, at the end of the day, we're here to shoot people, right? And, and like me personally, I do this for work. Like, I don't need to be out on the field being work too. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to have relax right. and have fun and have go fun. shoot people. Yeah. Like, it's this is... it's the experience, you know. Everybody talk about how like what <laughs> your your first airsoft experience. How was it? It oh, was man. <laughs> intense. Like, there's, there's no other way to put it. My very first game, I remember, it uh, wasn't even technically at a sanctioned field. I'm pretty sure we could have gotten in trouble for it. But uh, it, it was in a buddy of mine's backyard. He lived against a, a hillside. And all the neighbors were cool with it. Like, we, we told everyone before doing it. And uh, we just played up there. And it was mainly just like a capture the flag sort of deal. And it was maybe 15 dudes. And it's it still was, fun, right? It was a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it definitely launched me into it. I remember the very first game I played was with this cheap Springer M14 I got from, like, a big five. <laughs> and I think everybody started there at one point. And then uh, my first actual gun I actually bought from GI. Was, Spring Beretta mm -hmm. was my first yeah, uh, one. I, I think the very first gun I actually got, like, a real gun, was a JGS system I got from GI back in, like, 2010, 2011. And... That thing was just worked. It wasn't good. It worked, and I I love the thing. But um, 
you know, first actual game of playing at SC Village. Uh, that was a ton of fun. The maps were great. Uh, the community was great. It was very inviting. I got a lot of helpful tips that I still use to this day. Um, and I, I can't remember who I was there with specifically, but I, I picked up a lot. And it was a very welcoming community, and that's why it stuck. I, I, I think experience is so important. If you have a bad experience, mm -hmm. you, you might not like the airsoft now, right? Yeah. Everyone have 30 seconds of, you know, attention span all day. Like, for example, when Rich told me, a, a story at uh, Fairy Giant, that was it? When when someone was just standing on out on the balcony and oh, yeah. looking over. <laughs> Maybe you can explain it better, but I, I yeah, we had a uh, we we had a group come through who shall remain nameless. Um, we were we were doing op four at Fairy Giant and they, they came through and uh, they those of you that have been at GTI, it's not the main building but the secondary sort of compound with seven story story structure, but there's a rooftop at three stories up, and we'd been instructed to kind of take it easy on these players because they, you know, maybe we're not going to put up the stiffest competition, and we didn't want to, you know, just blow them out of the water. And but they like started, so I had like shot a couple people on the, I was at the bottom floor, so I just like shot a people, a couple people ran out the back door. I was just giving some resistance, and then you know mm -hmm. let them move through, make pro make some progress. So I just circled around, and I was on the outside of the building along the uh, the pipeline by the woods there, and. They they start wandering out on the third story roof. Why would no you do reason. that? There's Why would nothing you do on that? the roof. <laughs> and so I watched him for a minute. And eventually, I was like, all right, fine. So I shot one of them. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then another one comes out, stands right next to that person. Like I don't know what they're doing over there. They're talking to him. What's going on? So I'm like, why are you like literally? Somebody just died on this roof, and you're just standing there, like, <laughs> not, not doing it. You know. Anyway, I could like end up killing like four or five of them. They were just wa kept wandering out on the roof, and it's like. So, so it, it went back to what I was telling him. Look at that tactic. It's so bad. I mean, it's an open <laughs> roof that you're just standing there. I mean, even the dead men don't talk. You've seen the dead guy next yes. to you. Yeah. Why are you still standing there? Why aren't you pinpoint your gun and calling out, hey, there's either sniper somewhere or whatnot, right? So it's strategy. You know, right. I've seen a lot of people, even on pinball, right? Mm -hmm. Like the same they play people. Why would you want, run straight down the center, right? Sometimes that's not the best thing. You're going to get shot. Right? So, if, if you want to have I'll a good experience, I, I think you need to know the tactics. Right. Yeah, it, getting, get, having, having older, more experienced players to, you know, sort of just bring people to up to speed on basic... Common, common sense, sense, actually. Tactics. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like common sense once you know it, but, you know, to a lot of people, it's just, you know, you know for example, about it you know, when they're getting get, started. Get behind the cover. You know, <laughs> right. don't walk cover where your shadow is going to cast out so uh -huh. people don't know where you're yeah. at. You know, don't be so Don't noisy. silhouette yourself. Yeah, don't don't fire at somebody that's 500 yards away. This is not real AR or anything like that. No, yeah. You know, effective range. I know HPA goes much further, but still, you know, it's less than 250 feet, 300 no, yeah. feet. Typically, if I if I see somebody at around the 200 foot mark, I'm probably not going to bother because <laughs> yeah, I know my gun can hit them, but they have to be perfectly still. The wind has to be right. It takes so and, long for the BB to get there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. But when they're within that 200 foot range, it's like you're much more likely to hit them. And I, I've literally been at fields where somebody takes a shot at me 200, 250 feet. I'm watching him for a second and then yeah, I just step, so out of step the way. to the side. Yeah. Just watch the BB float up, up there it went. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is actually a fun question. And it's, it, you know, so we, we've talked about speed soft a little bit here. This, is, this kind of gets into a different style of play, which is interesting. Um, question for Milsim scenarios What's your opinion on taking the rules slash what players have said? In complete context, mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you're being detained. You can't use your weapon and continue to grab another player's sidearm, right? I've, so I've actually uh, seen that happen before. So <laughs> I actually one of the things that I didn't do much earlier on playing airsoft, but I've gotten I've really enjoyed doing more recently is I actually really enjoy the role playing side of it, um, getting people to actually have to think about interacting with other people. In, so he followed this. This is uh, Tyler. Uh, he also, uh, he probably was trying to get me to tell this story, but says, side note, Rich loves LMGs and legs. Okay, so um, so this, this is a fun story. I got arrested at the game, mm -hmm. um, in the game. Yeah. So, uh, because, so we were, yes, in the, in the game, uh, we were, it was a three-faction game. This was at a uh, Blind Fury event. Um Three faction game, and basically we had been we were the the uh, the civilians, right? Which I loved. I love being like legit civilians, where you just kind of are all your own thing. You kind of you know mess with people, right? Mm -hmm. um, but 
so so we'd been we'd been basically allied with Greenside. I think it was Greenside, one or the other. We were allied with one side all day, and we were just beating the because the other team had attacked the civilians for no reason right mm. off the bat, right? So we were just basically beating them into the dirt. Mm. Um, so we got intel that, uh, uh, that we were going to be double-crossed by the side that we'd be on the line with, that they were coming to kill our, huh. um, our mayor, the, you know, the civilian mayor, right? So we, uh, we went, so I, I was playing with Tyler, and he said, so I said, so you want to cause some trouble? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a section at Blind Fury that's the airstrip. It's like a big section of buildings, mm-hmm. wide open, and we'd been holding it with green all morning. Um, and so I was like, "Let's go take the airstrip." Like us, you know, before they before they get a chance to, you know, let's go take the airstrip. So we lined it. We we set this all up. There were only three of us. Uh, actually, was it two or three of us? I can't remember. I think we, it was just the two of us, and then we picked somebody else up along the way. Um, and we set this up. There were about thirty green holding the airstrip. Um, but we real casually, you know, just kind of sauntered in, uh, took the highest, uh, like the, the uh, flight, flight tower, yeah. right? Took the highest point and like, you know, just kind of, all right, I'm going to get these guys, you get these guys. I was running an LMG, so I said LMGs. And they had a whole squad of guys. It was about 10, probably between 10 and 15 guys were sitting up against a wall, like, you know, just all their legs Chilling. sticking out, just, you know, whatever. Um, it wasn't under under fire. And so... I was like, I could just walk in front of them and shoot them all, but like, I don't want to. I don't want to just you know, light them up right in the face. That's not real nice. So I was like, all right, from this angle, basically, I'm looking down from up above, and there's just like legs, 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 you know, just sticking out. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, this is cool. So we set it up. It, it probably took what five to ten seconds max, and we took out every single person <laughs> in the place. And I started with the LMG. I just went right up the line. I just went, you know, because they're right. Anyway, they got. Took every single person out. It was an awesome, awesome little exchange. They got so pissed. Literally, the uh, Sorry. the ref was uh, was like holding the guy back from it from uh-huh. attacking me. And he was like, "We weren't in the game. We were, you know, we have a heat casualty. We're doing all." And I'm like, I, "What do you want me to do? Like, you don't know how you've reg rags on. You're right. just sitting there." He's like, "You should have just banged us." I'm like, I'm, "You want me to walk up and bang?" Fifteen guys sitting there. Like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna turn around and shoot me? Like, you're exactly. Not gonna take that. One, maybe two. And so then... anyway, uh, sure. that's how I got arrested. My the mayor came and arrested me for war crimes. <laughs> 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 so I, I I I still think that's such a cool experience. It's Even on the other side that you got shot, and then now you have this engagement, right? It's fun, right? Like you said like it, it's. I really enjoy the the sort of role playing aspect when it's done well. Mm-hmm. Of, of like. You know, because it, it adds in the human element. Like, you don't just know, hey, these guys are against us and these guys are with us. It's like, okay, what are they doing? Like, why, you know, what's actually going on? Are they going to, are they doing something else? They're going to double cross me, turn around and shoot me in the back. Um, you know, to me, that's, that adds a whole different element. And it's something that, I, I don't know, I don't see a lot of, even in the Milsim events, like, role players tend to be pretty well defined in Milsim events. And that's, that, like, to me, gets rid of half the fun. Mm. Like having civilians or op four, they should be a total wild card. Like See, they should be, you should have no clue. Like what are they doing? What are they thinking? Are they with me? Are they against right, me? Like kind of like thinking. Right. Have to actually actually think and watch your back and figure out what's going on. Like when you touch base on that, right? The human aspect of it. We all have phones right here. That's why right. we're live streaming, right? <laughs> but guess what? This is something that I think it. it it's kind of weird too. I mean, you told me the story about some 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 girl just got all the snorkel gear going to uh-huh. the water and <laughs> took selfie and didn't even go snorkeling and walked out, right? Right. So I hope airsoft don't turn up like that, you know. Right. And it but it does like it's it's that has you know that mentality of like uh, you know, hey, I want to sh- you know, I want to get pictures for Instagram so that I look cool in all my airsoft gear. Like, okay, I, you know, I'm on Instagram, whatever. I'm on Facebook. It's you know, it's cool. You want to get good pictures? That's great. But like, when your when your online persona becomes more important than who you actually are and what you actually do in real life, like that's a problem. That's like when you're not weird. actually showing up and playing airsoft and enjoying airsoft. You just want everybody online to think that you played up and or showed up and played airsoft. No, yeah. Like that's 
that's messed up. Right. Like, and, it, and it met, you know, I think that, I think it really hurt, ends up hurting because then, you know, people aren't really interested in playing and having a good time. They're all worried about getting a good video. Right. Or getting, so what does it matter whether they didn't call their hit? They got a really cool video out of it, right? No, yeah, and yeah. What's a, I, uh, I didn't have a, I didn't own a camera until up until January. Right. And, uh, there were times when I was working here where we get loaner cameras for marketing and then we go out and get footage. I wouldn't get any good footage. Right. And I was like, what is going on here? Why, why am I good without the camera? But now with it, it's like, I can't do anything. And then it's like, you know what? Whatever. I'll put the camera on, run it all the time. And now that I'm doing that, I'm starting to get every little nook and cranny of it. Because I, I feel like when you're trying, nothing happens. And you're kind of trying to force something to happen and you make, you know, stupid mistakes on the field that get you killed. And then it's like you're trying to be something that you're not trying to be. So what I've found is that when you just make it part of your everyday thing, it kind of just it removes the mentality of trying to be something you're not, and you you end up being as good as you could possibly be. And some of the best footage I've gotten has come in the past like two or three years, or not two or three months. And uh, you know you've seen some of the footage I've gotten, um, the Wildlands footage wasn't some of my best footage, but. Uh, you know, we just need something real quick. Um, but we got some footage from this past weekend at Jungle Island's uh, one-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be going up pretty soon here, probably within the next, you know, week or two. Um, and then... Well, I think what we try to get touch base on is that Airsoft is, is not just YouTube. Airsoft is not Instagram. Airsoft is not just Facebook. Airsoft is not just this action cam. Airsoft, it's about the experience Being you there. had, the human aspect. Right. The, the, the capture the flag, the tactic, and all that kind of stuff we talk about, and the most important, make friends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, absolutely. every time, I mean, Rich and I, we'll, we'll have conversation like three times a year, but yeah. every time we talk, it's like, oh my God, look at the time, it's two yeah. hours fast by. Yeah. And we're just more rambling on, on airsoft, become an airsoft friend, yeah. you know, and all that kind of stuff. We're not just, oh, he, you sell me stuff, I sell your stuff. It's more like, okay, how can we make people like airsoft more? What what are some aspects <clears throat> we can improve on and all that? You know, no, absolutely. Become it. That's how. That's what this hobby is about. You know, right. we talk. I talk <clears throat> about how speedsoft can be a sport. You know, then sport involved with, you can be a league. You can have rules. You can have universal rules and whatever. Right. You can be a viewing. That's fine. Right. But that's just one aspect of airsoft as a whole. You have the Melson mm -hmm. part. You have people that play in the woods. You have people that just want to do shooting. Yeah. And you have IPS, CEO, whatever, right? Yeah. And that, it, it, this is what I, I really want to touch base on is, you know, Rich made this fine machine right here. You know? Just a bit. I mean, so yeah, this, this is sort of what is, kind of started our conversation this time. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, this is uh, the MTW, Modular Training Weapon. Uh, so this is our new gun that we're uh, working on getting out now. Um, tons of, tons of cool features. The the performance and and quality built into it is off the charts. So we're really excited about it. But you know, one of the things that that uh, you know Walter brought up was you know <clears throat> you're letting people now buy a gun with such a high level of performance just out of the box at an accessible price point. Like, what's that going to do? You know, for all these people that you know go out and try to abuse it now and you know try to so it, it's it, it is a it's a question that we spend actually quite a bit of time have spent quite a bit of time working on and trying to balance this because like as a manufacturer the easy thing for me right if I want to sell a gun like this the easy thing for me to do is to tell you hey it'll do like 70 rounds per second right it'll shoot like six seven hundred FPS no problem right something you know whatever no, yeah. and that's the easy way to sell it um, but I really don't want to do that because, you know, while it's not all my responsibility, what people go and use it for, because it is ultimately just a tool and you can use it or misuse it, whichever you want. I still, you know, like I need to have, um, I, as, a, as a manufacturer, I need to design reasonable limitations into this gun. That's why I love Wolverine Airsoft. They are actually responsible because they're seeing this as, as, as a hobby, as a potential sport on, on the wing or whatnot that... He wants it to prolong and not make a gun, make a make a, a tool like this and become a tool for jackasses. Right, exactly. And and again, I mean that's not, you know so the the balance we have to find in designing is like, okay, how do I give you like, you know, plenty of room in terms of performance? You can do what you need to with it. You know, you can play a lot of different styles, you can do all sorts of different stuff. 
but like not make it so crazy over the top that there's a high risk of people either intentionally or unintentionally getting hurt. Because mm-hmm. that's another thing we've like, yeah. you know, you so, you know, some kid gets this for for Christmas, has no clue what they're doing. They're just playing in the backyard with their friends or something, cranks the pressure all the way up, and you know, ends up hurting people if you don't design it right. Even yeah. though, I mean, is that completely my fault? Well, no. I mean, I give them the information on how to set it up properly, but. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean they're actually going to read the information or yeah, watch the information or whatever. So it's ultimately up to the user to know what they're doing with whatever the tools sure. they have. Like I've been in fields multiple times where FPS limits four hundred. Uh, kid goes to Chronos three ten. It's like oh yeah, room for improvement. So they go up their the regulator, change the settings on the FCU, come back shooting four hundred. But then they crank the rounds per second like way up, and then now you got something with the bus out there without even knowing it. Now it's all about you know being knowledgeable on the product that you have um, right. and knowing how not to abuse it. And I think you guys did a, a great job of actually limiting this because we talked about that a bit yesterday. Like, uh, what you said it was two joule limit on this, yeah, at, and then this configuration. Yeah, out, out of the box, it's right, limited to right about two joules. If you're on really heavy BBs, you could get a little over two joules. But, you know, what, it's, it, it's, uh, it's right around two joules, which is a reasonable limit that's most, you know, going to you know, fit with most of your field yeah. You know, field limits, and if you need to run a higher energy for some reason, you can modify it and set it up so that yeah. it'll do that. But right out of the box, that's gonna you know, you'll have a nice range. It's but it's not anything crazy because ultimately, you know, we don't want to. You know, you can think about it like a fence, right? You know, if you're, you're a railing, right? The railing's there. If someone wants to be an idiot and climb over the railing, they can still fall and hurt themselves. Yep. That doesn't mean you shouldn't put a railing there and like, yep. you know. Ha- have some safety precautions so that people that don't know what, the, you know, to accidentally step backwards don't fall yeah. off the edge, right? So I, I guess from my perspective is once you purchase this item, Sorry. you will have a lot of fun. Uh-huh. You will have a lot of, um, you know, ex- enjoyable experience with it. However, it comes with a huge responsibility. This will actually, you know, you, when you when you when you get something like this, right? It's kind of like you handing somebody a a very very. I'm waiting for someone just um, to drop the superhero responsibility. Quote sure. I <laughs> yeah, super great respons- power becomes I, I, great responsibility. Exactly. <laughs> no, it is it is true because yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this: there there's not one AEG that don't cost over a thousand dollars that can have sustained fire so it won't break right right and then rate, rate of fire whatnot right yeah but then now you you should if you use this and you try to be a troll on on instagram you try to make mins you try to be youtube sensation that you want to have um you know overshoot somebody no that's not what rich in intend to build this for no no please don't please go buy somebody else's product if you're going to do that I'm i'm entirely serious like i i don't I, I I do not want like take your money and go somewhere else if you're going to do that. Like that's you not, see how responsible that, that that's not it's it is it's not worth it. Like I mean, and I understand you know those videos are what get YouTube views and they're what you know whatever. I I, do, I don't care. It's, it's not, temporary fame. It's not right. even going to last. Like. Oh, and another thing I don't understand. When is you that, get older, how would you see? Hey, that right, yeah, I mean, yeah. were you a bully back then? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Are and, you serious about that? Yeah, right. Another um, thing I I don't understand is, I don't know about you guys, but I've invested probably more than I'm proud to admit into into my kit, and I I love the product that I have right now. But I'm not going to drop all this money just to go get banded every field around here. <laughs> it's like these are affordable, but they're not. They're not for every single person. It's not sure. like mom and dad. My first gun. I want to get this. Like, yeah, no, sure. you're gonna start with this. Your your but, your your value to cost ratio is very exactly. high. You get a ton out right. of it for what you know for what you have to pay. So, but it's still a, it's still a good chunk of money that you need yeah. to so, put in it. So, why are you gonna go drop you know five, six, seven hundred on a base gun just to go get banned in every field around here? It's right. like there's no point. Well, and that is, I mean, that's the other thing we were talking about is you really need to like we have responsibility in this. Everybody has responsibility in this, and you can't. A, a, the thing I see way too much of in the airsoft community in general is um, is everybody trying to push the responsibility off on some other segment. Listen, the manufacturers have responsibility to design products responsibly, right? The dealers have a responsibility to educate customers exactly. to keep that to make sure they know what they're doing. 
The fields have a responsibility to actually enforce rules. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you the number of fields I've talked to that complain, oh, I can't, you can't get cheaters to stop. And you say, okay, what are you doing? Well, if they, you know, if they cheat, they have to go sit out for 30 minutes. That's not That's enough. not, like, I, I, I hear that all the time. And I know not, I know not all of them. I also know plenty of fields that do ban people, and that's, that's great. That's what you need to do. But so the fields have responsibilities to, like, to learn the stuff they need. If there's new systems that come out, right, that, that you need to learn about in order to, to enforce them, don't ban stuff. You're just going to hurt yourself. Banning technology does no good. People yeah. won't cheat with whatever they want to cheat with, mm -hmm. right? Like, learn the technology. It's not that difficult. Ask us for help. We'll be happy to help. The players also have responsibility. I think the and players the biggest. The, yeah, it is, but but the but here's the thing. I hear stuff all the time. I hear this from HBA players quite a bit with Jewel Creep, right? Oh well, I'm not. It's not cheating. They're you know they they're they're just I, I'm abiding by the rules because they say Chrono with point twos. I listen. That is that I understand. They wrote the rules in an in a way that is not good, right? It's not a good writing yeah. of the rules. That doesn't mean you should take advantage of it. The fact that the rules technically say that you're still in compliance doesn't mean you're not being irresponsible. Yeah, the players probably. also have to take responsibility and understand that if you chrono with point twos, but you put point fours in there, to understand the equipment that you're using and use it responsibly. So, yeah, and, and more and more so now, box done. More and more now, <laughs> uh, I'm seeing fields in SoCal switching to the Joule measurement mm -hmm. rather than FPS. It's, it and, is happening. It's been slow, yeah, but it is but happening. It's, it's coming slowly, and I, I think the typical Joule limit for this area at least is 1.5 Joules, which is reasonable. And, you know, 1.5 Joules of the 2.0 is... I think like four oh seven or like four like Sorry, just, I, just I, under four ten. Yeah. But um, with a with a three or a four even it's it's like three thirty I think because the for two joules for two or for, for one point one point five it would I think it's point three is right it's, so I think it's like three twenty eight or something it's right yeah. around three thirty right something 330. like that and if, if if you were to get the same settings to make it shoot four hundred with the two. You're you're right at one point five joules, but if you instantly drop a three into there, your FPS is only dropping to like what three fifty, three sixty. Somewhere yeah, somewhere there. around there. So you're, you're actually yeah you're, you're actually at like one point six, one point yeah. seven joules still. There's there's a lot of science behind that. I'm not going to go into that because it's just too. We much have fun. an awesome video on. Have you seen our video on? I that? actually have. Okay, yeah. we have a really fun video. Uh, one of our what the tech videos. You should go check it out if you don't understand jewel creep. Um, I haven't seen a better video on it. There may be a better one out there, but we went to a lot of trouble to think about how to explain this and demonstrate it in ways that make sense to people. Yeah. So because um, science. Because science. Yep. <laughs> so so I, I think the bottom line is this: uh, airsoft is a hobby, can uh -huh. be a sport. It's something that everybody can enjoy. It 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 does not mean that hey you know you love you love violence. No, it's. It's something that gets you out of the house, something right. that that, yeah. that gets you and your friends to do something, even father and son, family yes. oriented. Yeah. This is, this is, I mean, listen, this is, does so many things that we need right now in, in our society, right? We need kids to be getting out, kids, you know, get out not, not just kids, even adults, right? Get, you yeah. know, we get tied up in our phones and our TVs and all that kind of stuff. People aren't getting out there. They're not getting exercise. They're not interacting with people. Mm -hmm. Like, it, social interaction is sending a text. I'm sorry, that's no, not social interaction. Work. Like, no. I, I mean, that's, that's not the same thing. You get social interaction, you learn teamwork, you get exercise. Like, like you say, you can, if you do it as a family, you get time together as a family, doing yeah, all this absolutely. stuff. Like, this is, there's a lot of really good potential here. And you really, you, you know, we need to... You're just hurting it. You're just hurting that possibility for everybody else when you go and abuse that and try to injure people mm -hmm. or hurt people yeah. by being a tool, by taking somebody and lighting somebody up because you're pissed off at them or, you know, overshooting people. Mm -hmm. I mean, why, like... Why even bother playing? Why? Yeah, why? This is, this, is not what, this is not what this is about. It should be about having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, like, that's the whole point. Let's have fun. It's exactly like you said. Like, hey, I, if you have fun in Milson, play it. If you have fun in, you know, your backyard game, play it. If you have fun in speed soft, play it. If you have fun in anything, do it. Do you know you can do it with airsoft? Airsoft, it it will teach you honor, responsibility, yep. friendships. Mm -hmm. I mean, look how many friends 
all of you, all of us, all made are from. Microsoft. Like, not even during the game. It's after the game uh -huh, that we yeah. went. We go EA. Hey, where do you want to go eat? And, yeah. and you know what? Some of the, some of the best fights are when you're fighting against people that you know right. and you really yep. like. Uh, there is a, a, a game at uh, Shelby. It was Shelby Black Sheep at Shelby Three, I think. Mm. Um, one of the teams that's actually one of our sponsored teams now. Uh, TDZ was there, and they were on the opposite side. We ran into them nonstop <laughs> the entire game. Like. We were constantly, we had some of the best firefights. Just just awesome, awesome firefights. We'd win some, they'd win some, like, and, it, but it was always fun. It was always super intense because it, you know, and we'd finish up and, um, you know, and go give hugs after we got done the firefight. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, and we, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's, and this is why like, we love is, Airsoft. Right. Yeah. I had, I had complete strangers at another event. This is also at Shelby, actually. Uh, Christian was there for this, a uh, good buddy of mine. Um, but the two of us got into a firefight. This was at the end. This was like 11, like 10, 11 in the morning uh, at, at, in a 24-hour op. Like, this is the end of the event. We, two of us got pinned down in this little building right at the end of the street at up, in Uptown there. I forget what the building num or letter is there. But, and we had one of the most intense firefights I've ever had in Airsoft. A whole squad came down on us. And we were pinned down in this little building, and we killed, I don't remember, we killed probably six or eight of them, but they ended up getting us. But and you die was, fun. It was awesome, yeah, yeah. and we literally were standing outside in the, in the little courtyard of the building, and this guy that I've never n known before runs out from behind the building and gives us a big hug, and that was so awesome, you know? <laughs> right? And, yeah, uh, yeah. like, it was, just, it was just an awesome time. Everybody you called your hits, you did what you're supposed to, it was super intense. It was fun. This is what Airsoft should be about. Airsoft <coughs> is about fun. Airsoft is about honor. Airsoft is about family and yeah. socializing. Right. Absolutely. I think that's the biggest thing. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, we call it the social media. But are you really talking to people? No. 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 Yeah, yeah. Freaking, uh. you're, you're putting on a show for the most part. And yes. Like, uh, all my friends now have come from playing Airsoft. Uh, I think there's one guy I hang out with on a regular basis I didn't meet through Airsoft, and it's crazy to actually say that now. Um, but the the very first big event I went to was Operation Black Shield 2 at SC Village. I went there with Jacob. He's one of our techs now. Uh, I play with him pretty much every weekend. Um, and uh, I remember we were on the tan side, and it was a night game. Uh, at SC Village, there's like a two-story building with a castle. And uh, everyone's kind of just exchanging fire. And then some dude just comes out of nowhere and takes control of the entire situation. Like, hey, hold your fire, hold your fire. And then we're still taking fire from the castle area. And literally, and he's like, everybody on the count of three, pick a window, just open up. Just completely open up. Count it down, one, two, or three, two, one, go. We all popped up. And then there's just a roar of gearboxes opening up on that castle. And that, to this day, is one of the coolest airsoft memories I've had. And I've been to bigger ops. I've been to Lion Claw, Milson West, um, American Milson. And there's nothing that can just compare to that one memory just because of the, the rush that everything had. And I, there's people I met at that Black Shield I still play with today. Uh, play with Jacob, Aaron, um, Sison, Froman. I, I still play with all your guys. And that was. And I, I think that's what, that's what this is all about. You know, mm -hmm. Wolverine is yeah. owned by players. So is GI. We, we're not. We're not some Chinese guy just sitting there. It's like collecting money from <laughs> from people. It's like, hey, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get this oh. gun that that's gonna for sure break on you in thirty seconds and and try to sell it. No, we want to spread this. We 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 were talking about how this can make airsoft into the next level. You know, like right. like we were saying the iPhone. And I hundred percent agree with you when you, when you mentioned it like like that. It's sometimes it's not about the price. Sometimes it's about performance. Right. Sometimes. Utilize it and have fun. It's about experience, yes. right? You're talking about now. Everyone has an attention span of thirty seconds. Yeah. Everyone wants to experience something. Then this, that's why people don't own houses anymore. People don't. They don't want to pay bills. They don't. They want to go experience stuff. Yeah. Airsoft. It's a great experience. We just <laughs> demonstrated. I mean, with all these memories, man. I have so many memories all the way from. Um, I don't know if you guys remember Combat Mission, the the USA TV show. Unfortunately, Scott Helveston passed away in um, 2004. Okay, you know, the, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that. Yeah, yeah. That's why oh, we yeah, went yeah. into Fallujah because yeah. they, they... Oh, right, right, they right. Died. Sorry. They passed away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I play with guys like that, and I, I still remember I enjoyed it, you know? Yeah. So those are the memories, and we can all cherish. 
you know, what, what kind of memory can you have on being an Instagram bully? Being, <laughs> being a man troll, being, being like, hey, you know. Hashtag truth. You, you, you just want to overshoot on somebody. Imagine your, your, your family see it later on. How will they see you? And lastly, I, I really want to touch base on this. Airsoft is not about violence. No, no. It's not about violence. We do you utilize something that looks similar to a, a firearm, but firearm is not about violence too. You know, yes, it, it's intent to do something like that, but it's up to the person whether or not you want to carry out those things. Exactly. That's why it comes with a lot of great responsibility. Yeah. Same thing with airsoft. You know, let's treat it like a real firearm. Obey the law. Understand what the fun behind it, you know, you, right. you go out and socialize and all that kind of stuff. And that's what it's all about. That's just, that's yep. my... Uh, I, I completely agree. We need to take get, this. just, it, it's about having fun, ultimately. It's about, it's about having a good time, you know, hanging out with people, getting to know people, and, and building community. Because there, there's, you know, it's, there, there's a lot of need, we see, we see that all the time. You know, kids that, that really need, you know, really need something to be a part of, that need, you know... A community to be a part of, and so let's let's, let's give build them a, communities. Let's build, you know, let's give them a good community, not this. You know, you know, I'm I'm better than you because I have better kit. Kind of crap that we get all the time. You know, oh I'm you know, oh you're not wearing cry, so who no, be elitist. Yeah, number three. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's not really about re elitist. It's it's your attitude toward things. Exactly. It's it's how. We, we should have mental programs. Like, like I say, you know, some, when somebody buy this, now you have so much responsibilities. And you're actually going to enjoy your game a lot more when you tell, hey, I'm, you're, you're new, I'm telling you, hey, f come follow me, see, see how I do stuff and whatnot. You know, Rich just made a good tool for that. Right. And so, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the things, you know, we were talking about, what, how can this grow Airsoft? And that, that's, that's been my vision for wh why we've developed the technology the way we have and what we've done and why we've pushed so hard is I want to see, I, I want to see this grow. Um, and the way that I see technology being a piece of that is by making it more fun because your gun isn't breaking all the time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because you're, you know, right. you're not having to, I mean, we, a, every Airsofter has the same, the same experience, right? You you know, you, you buy a few cheap guns and whatever. You play in the backyard with your friends, and it's a good time. And then you you know you get a you get a nice gun, right? Whatever that is, usually an AG in the U.S., right? Yeah. So you spend a little bit more money on it, and you sign up for your first big op, right? And you're going to go to this, whether that's a local op or a regional op, national op, whatever it is. And you spend two months getting ready for this, and you get you know, and you get there, and an hour into the game, your gun breaks. Right. Hey, that's why you gotta have backups or get an NCW. Right, and, and then like literally, this happens to everybody. This isn't like oh, this happens sometimes. Like that's literally, everybody does this. It doesn't even matter what brand. No, it, it's it's completely irrelevant. And so, uh, for, you know, from the technical side standpoint, but it doesn't stop that because what happens is you do that, and then you go back. All right, well, I'm gonna upgrade it now so that it doesn't happen again. And then you go and you blow out a button. Right, exactly. That's and like, it's you know, it it so. Uh, like from a technical standpoint, I'm looking at this and saying, "Look, I want to design a system that lets you, that lets you play, have fun. You don't have to worry about your gun." It's one of the biggest compliments I ever got from a buddy of mine. The first time he tried one of our systems, uh, I was about halfway through the event, and I asked him, "Yeah, how's it going?" Yeah, how's it?" Going? And he kind of looked at me, got a funny look on his face, and he was like, "I just realized this is the first time, first game I have ever played." And I have not once worried about my gun breaking. So like, you just even, have to... Like, even when it doesn't break, you're always sitting here with your AG there going, oh, did that make a funny sound? Huh? I don't know, that didn't sound quite right. Like, yeah. you know, so even when it doesn't break, you're always... Trying to, he's like, yeah, I just not once has it ever occurred to me that, like, something might go wrong. It just, you know, it just works. So, you know, it really, like, that. that's what we're trying to accomplish, is we want to give you very high performance at a... At a reasonable price point, and we we're not going super cheap on this. We it's but it's a reasonable price point that a lot of people can 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 uh, make work. But you get a great value out of it, it, and it's incredibly reliable. So you can go out and play and have fun and not worry about your gun breaking every time you pull the trigger. So so you know like our younger players or whatnot that's paying attention to this, right? You know how to get this? Get good grades. Tell your family. Yes, tell your, there you tell go. Your, tell your parents like okay. 
This is what I'm going to work to. Absolutely. You know? Get good grades. Take the recyclables out. Mow your lawn. Get a yeah, job. Get, yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, when I was when I was before I was 18, <clears throat> my parents hooked me up with my first gun, and that was it. They didn't they didn't give me any more money after that. I literally went to my neighbors asking if they needed like chores done, like mowing the lawn, taking the trash out. There you out, go. Any of that, I'll make like 10, 15 bucks a house, and I'd save up for the the next red dot, the next mag, the next battery, uh, the next plate carrier, all that. And it'll come with time, but you got to put the time in to get something good. But you exactly. know what? And all of that. It sounds like work because it is work, but you know what? That's good. That's it's, because it's all the experience, right? Yeah. This exactly. is stuff that you're learning to work. You're learning that hey, there's this, you know, this thing I want to do. Whether this is one of our products or you know something else you're trying to get, whatever, it teaches you to take responsibility for your, for you know, making things happen. Because stuff, you know, as much as we, you know, we want instant gratification with everything now because you can. You know, click a button, you get an instant video, you get, you know, get instant food, you get instant everything mm -hmm. right now. You, you know, get, basically get two-day shipping on anything you want. <laughs> like, you know, I'm, you, you go online and click buy and it's there the next day. You know, uh, that's not how most of life works. And, you know, learning to work for things, uh, learning that if you, if you really want something, you have to be willing to invest the time. Delayed gratification is probably one of the biggest life lessons that I think young people will ever learn. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna in in my part on this, I have I have millions of conversation with many vendors, many many manufacturers, many, you know, factories. And most of our conversation is always about how can we sell more. Okay. This is the first time, you know, Rich and I really approach how can we make this sport grow? We're not lo we're not looking at units, we're not looking at whatever. And this is the first time I see a <coughs> manufacturer come out and say, "Hey, I want to be he is the responsible one." That's why I have so much respect for him. I have so much respect for how he wants to push this hobby further. You know, not just like, "Okay, Walter, can you sell 1000 units?" No, oh, we're not talking about you know dropping the price of whatnot. We're talking about, hey, airsoft is a good life experience. Airsoft is a good hobby. Airsoft is a good things that you can get people out. You know, it's it's stress relief, just yeah. like any, <laughs> any kind of hobby. And then he just touched base on this. Hey, if um, a teenager or someone wants to get this, save up. You know, find ways to get this. Yeah. You know. There you go. I mean, I never hear that from any manufacturer. So, you know, good job, Rich. Thanks. Well, thanks. I, as far as I think we probably should go ahead and wrap this up. We, oh, you know, yeah. get, get, wrap up the live We've stream. for a while. This is supposed, been, to, be, this is supposed actually, to be a 20-minute live stream. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. Almost think, an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, but well, thanks for watching, guys. Absolutely. Where can our followers find you at? Uh, if you are not already on our Facebook page, we're Wolverine Airsoft on Facebook, Wolverine Airsoft Official on Instagram, uh, Wolverine Airsoft on YouTube, I think, if I remember correctly, and and uh, on Snapchat, Wolverine Airsoft, no T, it's one too many letters for their name, so get on, follow us, and... Uh, Find out about the latest news. Yes, it's, it's, lots of good stuff. You know, and... It's available for pre-order right now. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, thanks guys. Alright, we'll see you on the next one. How do you turn this off?